In this video we're going to look at independent events. Independent events, well let's think about what we mean by two things being independent of each other. Well there's a quick definition knowing that one event occurred does not affect the probability of another event occurring. And I give a, a real kind of silly example here but it kind of proves the point or shows the point. Suppose we have this event B and that event is it is raining or it's raining outside and this other event A is my office carpet is green right it's kind of a blue green but we're just looking at probabilities here so the let's suppose we have we want to look at the probability of the conditional probability that probability of my office carpet is green given it's raining outside alright so Let's think about the probability of my office carpet being green. Well, there's lots of colors to choose from, and there's a certain probability that that they that green is chosen. Now, if I know it's raining outside, does that affect that probability that my carpet is green? And obviously, you can kind of think that eh, no, it doesn't affect that probability. In other words, knowing something about it being rain, raining or not has no effect of whether I've chosen or someone has chosen green for the carpet in my office. So the um, the probability we can argue that you know those two events are independent of each other and therefore the probability of A given B is just the same as the probability of A. So in other words it doesn't give us any information about A or have any effect on that probability A. We could also say that the probability that it's raining outside given my office carpet is green is equal to the probability that it's raining outside. In other words, my carpet has no effect on the weather. Uh, at, least, at least none that I know of. Um, probably none measurable. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at probability of A given B. So we've, we write this down here. We know that from what we've already been studying you know, that that's equal to the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. That's true for any two sets or any two events. But for independent events we know that this is equal to probability of A. So I'll write probability of A over here. Now if I just take this part of the equations that I've written down I can take the probability of B and bring it up here with the probability of A and we find that the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now this of course is true only for independent events. So on the next page I write at the top the definition of independent events. So events A and B are independent if and only if the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay so remember this is not always true it's only going to be true for independent events. All right, so let's look at a, an example, and uh, this is just a made-up example. Suppose we've got these this sample space, and it's the letters of the alphabet A, B, C, all the way through Y. So notice that I left off Z, so there's no Z in there, and therefore there's 25 elements in that sample space. Now let's make the set A be equal to the letters A, B, C, D, all the way through J. And then B are the letters G, H, I, all the way through P. Okay, so the question is, well given, also I've, I state that all of, these thi all of these elements are equally likely. So the question is, is are A and B independent of each other? Well, we don't know what these things represent or what they are or how you know what's going on here so we don't we can't really just kinda think about whether or not they're independent so the only way to really do that is to determine if probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B if that's true then they're independent alright so I wrote a Venn diagram down here I accidentally started to write Z but I crossed it off because there's no Z in this problem Alright, so I wrote down the Venn diagram. You can see the intersection is G, H, I, J. So there's 10 elements in A and 10 elements in B. Therefore, the probability of A is 10 over 25, or 2 fifths. 
the probability of B is 10 over 25 also, or 2 fifths. And the intersection, probability of the intersection of A and B, there's four elements in there, so it's 4 over 25. Now, that's the probability of A intersect B, so let's calculate now probability of A times the probability of B. Plug those in, 2 fifths times 2 fifths. We get 4 25ths, which is equal to our probability of A intersect B. So since those two are equal, we can say that A and B are independent. Now let's look at the same problem. We'll do in the same problem, except now let's throw Z in there. Z is now part of the sample space. Now it's just going to seem weird that this would really affect things, but it will. All right, so let's look at probability of A. It's again 10, samp 10 elements, but now there's 26 total. And so that becomes 5 thirteenths. B again has 10 over 26, and its probability is 5 thirteenths. Now the intersection still has four elements, but the probability is 4 26, so it's 2 thirteenths. So now, so we have the intersection, probability of the intersection. Let's look at probability of A times the probability of B. We'll plug in 5 thirteenths and 5 thirteenths, and we want to see if that's equal to 2 thirteenths. And you can see that, no, that's, that's not going to be equal to each other. And so therefore, A and B are not independent. So we didn't really change the sets at all, we just changed the sample space. Also, I forgot to point out that sometimes people confuse independence with mutually exclusive. Let me go back one so we can I can make, maybe mention that again, or mention that. These two sets are not mutually exclusive in this particular problem. In other words, there's, they have some common elements between them. However, they were independent. So those are that does, the two statements, independent and mutually exclusive, are not the same thing. And sometimes it's confusing to think that that, that might be the same thing, but it's not. All right, so we'll do one more problem down here at the bottom. We're just given probability of A is 0.2, probability of B is 0.3, and we're also given the probability of A union B, which is 0.44. Now, the question is, are A and B independent? Again, we're just going to find the probability of A intersect B, and then the probability of A times the probability of B, and see if they're equal. Probability of A intersect B, we can find from our equations we've we've looked at a long time ago. Probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A union B. So plug in those values and we get 0 0.06. Now the probability of A and the probability of B were given 0.2 and 0.3. We multiply them and we get 0 0.06. And yes, that is equal to our probability of A intersect B. And so therefore we can say that A and B are independent. Alright, so mainly the way that you're going to prove that things are independent is when we're talking about probabilities, is if the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B.